Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is November 2nd, 2024, and the supporters section has responded to Barcelona's letter by announcing a strike. Also, Bitinha from PSG has been linked with Barcelona. And finally, Rafinha has spoken about his time under Xabi. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Welcome to the channel, my name is Mo, and before we begin with the news, just a quick reminder to make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment. All of this helps this channel continue to grow. Also, if you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise, make sure to go get Skid Bag or Fanatics, and if you are looking to place any sports bets, make sure you head to bet us. All links are down below in the description. Now, begin this video with the news that the Barcelona supporters section have announced a strike in protest to Barcelona's letter. Now, I talked about this in a previous video, but Barcelona sent a letter to the supporters section charging them 21,000 euros because Barcelona were fined several times during the last season for inappropriate chants, racist chants, Nazi salutes, Nazi banners, etc. And the cumulative of all these fines that Barcelona have received from La Liga and UEFA have totaled to 21,000 euros. And as such, Barcelona have sent a letter to, these, to the supporters section charging them those 21,000 euros for the fines that the club have had to pay. And in response, the supporters section have sent a statement to Barcelona declaring a strike during tomorrow's match against Espanyol, where the supporters section will not cheer for the first 15 minutes in protest of that letter that Barcelona sent them. Now, in this statement, the supporters section are also asking for a sit down with the club to discuss this matter in more detail because the support, even though the supporters section admit that yes, there have been inappropriate chants, they say that it's been only from a few individuals and that these chants don't represent the entire section as a whole. So they want to sit down with Barcelona to try to find a solution, identify those individuals, kick them out rather than just have everybody pay for the mistakes of those very few individuals. Anyways, more news because Bitinha has been linked with Barcelona. Now, the 24-year-old uh, Portuguese center midfielder who currently plays at PSG has been linked to Barcelona, and the reason for that is because during the Ballon d'Or ceremony, Bitinha's agent, who's no other than Jorge Mendes, was seen walking up to Jean Laporta and introducing Bitinha to Jean Laporta. And this, of course, has given rise to a lot of talks and rumors on whether Jorge Mendes is trying to bring Bitinha to Barcelona or whether Barcelona are interested in him. Now, of course, this all could just be a coincidence. It could just be, you know, just like, hey, meet this guy. Hey, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, and that's it. But on the other hand, it is Jorge Mendes, and Jorge Mendes does not do anything for the sake of it. If he does something, it's because he has a plan, and it's reported that he could be trying to bring Bitinha over to Barcelona, because after all, Bar uh, Bitinha has an incredible progression. He has a lot of potential, and I don't think Jorge Mendes is going to want to see Bitinha waste that potential in the French League, with all due respect to the French League. And as such, we could be talking about Bitinha in the future. Because his contract does expire in 2027. And of course, Barcelona are not going to try to make any moves before that. Because he would cost an arm and a leg. But who knows? Maybe down the road, we could see Barcelona try to swoop Pitinha away from PSG. And I have to say, if that happens, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> but anyways, I do want to ask you guys. Would you guys like to see Pitinha in Barcelona? Yes? No? Let me know down below in the comment section. Now on to the next bit of news. Because Rafinha, in his most recent interview has expressed frustration with the Barcelona former coach and legend Xavi Hernandez. Now, this is what the Brazilian had to say. It's more complicated there. I laugh because that has happened to me a lot. It's not a criticism of Xavi. Unconsciously, I already knew that I was going to have to go out. I tried to do everything in 60 minutes and nothing came out. And the other times when things did go my way, I'd come off just the same. So Rafinha expressing his frustration during uh, during Xavi Hernandez's era, saying that 
no matter what he did, whether he played great, whether he played horribly, he would always be subbed off at the 60th minute. And so Rafinha kind of complained about that, but at the same time saying it's not really a criticism. And I have to say, I don't know if I completely agree with what Rafinha is saying as far as being a frustration, because after all, and I'm not one to defend Xabi because I thought he did a horrible job, but after all, the reason why Xabi substituted him so many times is because Rafinha simply was not performing during the matches. So yes, on one hand, Xabi is does have some fault with Rafinha's underperformance because now we're seeing a Gotinha under Flick. But at the same time, you still have to take responsibility for your own performance. So just blaming Xabi saying that, you know, it's his fault because he always subbed you out at 60th minute. Mm, I don't think it's the right way to go. Now, Rafinha was also asked if he, was, if he ever felt like he was not part of the club. And to that, he said the following. At times, yes, especially during the first six months before the World Cup. But I also felt it in the rest of the windows. They always said one thing or another, that I was no good, that I had to be sold. So Rafinha, of course, talking about how he sometimes felt like he wasn't part of the club because the fans were constantly talking about him, uh, him needed to be sold because of his underperformance. But now, thankfully, he has reverted the situation. And of course, now the fans couldn't be any happier because when you perform, well, the fans support you. Now, finally, we will end this video with the news that it's been revealed that Jean Camprubi met with Jean Laporta before launching his Som Un Clam campaign. Now, if you don't know who Jean Camprubi is, I talked about him in several videos in the past. He is the son and the grandson of two Barcelona presidents. He has launched his campaign called Som Un Clam in order to oppose Jean Laporta. He is the main guy who's being supported by the Barto Rosellista movement, which is the movement uh, started by uh, Rosé and Bartomeu. He's kind of like their main guy. He's the guy who they're looking to take uh, to take the mantle now that uh, both Rosé and Bartomeu are no longer presidents. And it's been revealed that Jean Camprubi did meet with Jean Laporta before he launched his campaign and he met to ask Laporta one question and one question only. Will the club still remain owned by its members or are you, are you looking to convert it into kind of a company or a private entity? Of course, Jean Laporta made it very clear that as long as he's the president, the club will always be owned by its members. Now, whether Camprobi believed it or not, we do know now that Camprobi launched his campaign after that meeting because he is looking to oppose Jean Laporta in the 2026 elections. Anyways, that is all the news for this video. I did upload two other videos before this one, so make sure to check them out. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and as always, bis cabarsa.